still very confused. All right, Ambot is on the way. On the way, almost there. Hey, this almost, way, this almost. way. Hey, what? Is that counted? Still counted? No, not counted. Red line, right? <laughs> yeah, red line. Hi, I'm Shabir and this is The Library Report, a series where we explore fascinating stories, talk to interesting people and dabble in exciting projects within and beyond our libraries. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a savvy computer programmer, writing lines of code or building the next Wally? -E? You could definitely browse the computer section in the library for books on how to code. But what if I tell you there's also a special place in the library where you can get free hands-on experience with learning how to code and build your very own robot. Stay tuned till the end of the episode to find out more about participating in our giveaway contest. Hi Mei Ling. Hi. Hi Asan. Hi Shabir. Thank you very much for having me here. Welcome to Make It at Libraries here in Pungo Regional Library. Yeah, so you know, I was kind of you know, mind blown when I realised that you can build robots in the library. So could you tell me more about Make It at Libraries? Yes, Make It at Libraries is an NLB initiative that lets people to try and learn about tech. So people can come here, try out 3D printing, laser cutting, coding and robotics to create their own projects, bring their ideas to life. Mm, and talking about bringing ideas to life, that looks like Wally on the table. Well, he may look like Wally, but he's actually named QD. Right. I, and his okay. blue friend over here is the Mbot. Mm, Mbot, okay. They are STEAM educational robots in Make It that we use to teach coding and robotics to beginners. Let me tell you more about them. Yes, please. This QD itself is a mini robot that is equipped with sensors and motors for it to perform operations and functions that the user wants. We can assemble it from a kit here, which allow the users to learn about the robot as well as the functions and components in the robot. Um, to program it, we use the block-based programming language. That uh, This is a very simple language that uh, allows the beginners to pick up coding and robotics. So Shabir, you've met the QD, mm -hmm. now meet the M-Bot. Mm. Similar concept, it uses sensors in the front, at the bottom, and possibly other places as well, okay, to learn about its environment and use whatever it detects and the microcontroller will process this data and use it to move around its environment using the wheels. Before this, people used to learn about machine language. It's sophisticated. So that's how they used to program Arduino-based microcontrollers. But right now, with these Steam kits, it's a lot easier and they have made it such a way that you use block-based programming as well to program these Arduino robots. So that's just a different platform from what's available in the QD. Right, so does that mean it's a bit more complicated? Yes, you can actually attach a variety of sensors that this company has to extend its functionalities. So mailing everything is in parts right now. Could you tell me uh, what is the function of each part and where it goes? Basically, this is the body itself. Mm -hmm. It's used to attach motors to the side and uh, motors are used to control the movement of the robot. So it, it goes to the... So like you, you can see down here that there's two motors here, right. All right, which is these two motors. Oh. And you connect to the back wheel, which is this one. All right. right. Then it will drive the robots in a direction that you program, mm. whether forward, backward, or in a circle. Okay. All right. Then after that, we will assemble the body where we will be using the micro bit to be connected mm -hmm. so that you can use the micro bit to control sensors like the ultrasonic sensor. Okay. So when you see this robot itself, the body with the micro bit is attached on top of the robot and the sensor is above. Right. So there's a wire that connects it to the casing, the body. Oh, I see, okay, there, There's cool. a wire, yeah. yeah. When the sensors read obstacles in front, mm -hmm. it will send a signal to the microcontroller and the robot will stop the motor. Right. Mm. Now that we have assembled the robot, we can proceed on to do the coding. Okay. All right, now that the QD is all assembled, how do I use this software to get it moving? Uh, this is actually the block-based programming software, uh, which is on the website. And uh, you use the various blocks here to control the robot. Mm. Um, on top here, you can read the sensor value from the ultrasonic sensor. And then you can change the value on basically how far do you want to detect your obstacle. So okay. now you can change it if you want. Okay, can I put 10 cm? Yeah. Okay. So and then, yeah. after that, once you've detected that it's very near to the obstacle, uh -huh. below 10 cm, mm -hmm. you will do, you will set the motor, change the motor speed to a reverse. 
Right. So the motor will reverse. Then after that, we will get it to stop. If the obstacle is not there and it's very far away, the robot will actually continue going forward. Mm. Okay. So besides the controlling all this, there are other things that you can control on the robot. We can actually get the robot to display text messages here uh, or symbols. Mm. Then also we can get the robot to turn in circles depending on the values. How do I use the software? Like, do I need to do something? So once you have finished doing coding the software, you can connect the cable and download the program onto the microcontroller here. Yeah. Okay. Then you can get it to do the work. So maybe you want to turn it on. Okay. You you will start to move. So we gotta plug this in. Yeah. And then it gets downloaded, huh? Yes. Okay. Okay. And now we can get it going. Ah uh, yes. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's quite easy and intuitive, huh? Yes. To get it up and running. Yeah. So I've had a taste of building a robot. And I'm just curious, you know, for a total beginner like me, is it possible for me to join the robotics workshop held in Make It at Libraries? Of course. The world of robotics and coding can be quite hard for those who are not familiar. The starter workshops provide a safe space for everyone to learn and try new technologies, in this case, programming robots. No prior experience is required and all workshops and materials are provided to NLB members at no cost. To further their learning, we also welcome members to use the space and equipment to work on their personal ideas and projects. Besides reading books, the library recognises there are other ways to learn, especially when it relates to tech. And uh, what has the response been from the participants so far? It's actually been very great. We have people from teenagers all the way up to seniors who come in and learn coding. No one is too old or too young to code. We have a teenager who came into the space and picked up coding to create his own robot. He has created his own life-size robot and picked up seven coding languages and printed his own circuit boards. What do you hope participants can take away from this, you know, apart from the basic understanding of coding? Well, not everybody is going to build websites, robots or even AI cars. We hope participants can better appreciate and understand our increasingly tech-infused world. So, um, what's the difference between the programming for QD and MBOT and what is like, you know, significant about this? Right, for this robot, you have the option to code using text-based commands. Mm -hmm. But for the workshop, users are usually taught the block-based commands. It's a lot easier for users to pick up, try and see the results of their efforts. Right, and for QD, it's only block-based, is it? Yes. Right, and uh, that means you can also like input more complex commands in the programming for the MBOT? For MBOT, once you master the basic blocks and once you start playing around with the text-based commands, sure, you can go ahead and try it out. Mm. Okay, Shabir, so let me show you how to use this programming tool. Mm -hmm. You can see there are different colours here right. and there are blocks within this app tray. Mm. Okay. So these blocks look very familiar to you? Yeah, they look similar to the QD's um, interface as well. Correct. These are meant for you to easily pick up and try out dragging the blocks over to the coding area. Right. You can place them however you want and see whether your code works. Mm. So for now, we'll be using these uh, blue blocks. Okay. So one of them is a line following code mm -hmm. and one of them are movement codes. Mm. So what we're going to do now is to code a simple sketch okay, to follow this line. Okay. All right. So um, maybe you can try it out. Just drag that block over. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we place it here. Yep. Alright, All right. that's great. For now, let's try to upload the sketch into the robot. Okay. Okay, so just uh, press this button over here. Which one? Alright, that's the correct oh, button. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, we'll just need to wait a moment for mm -hmm. the code to load. And it looks about done, so you can just go ahead, unplug, and unplug paste this, the... huh? Yes. Okay, unplugged. Turn it on. Just the on button. Yes. Okay, let's try it on this line. Okay. And uh, what do I do now? Turn on the button. Okay. To run the sketch. Boom. So far, so good. Oh, yeah, it's turning. Nice. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. Okay. So, 
in a race, which robot would you back? Race? Yes. We're going to race? Yep. Oh wow, okay. I think I'm going to take the M-Bot. Okay, then I guess I default to the QD. Okay, All let's right. go. Let's go. All right, so we're ready to race. Hassan, are you ready? Yes, let's so go. So I'm going to use the M-Bot and I'm going to use the QD. Who are you betting on? QD. Oh, I'll win this race. Okay, now uh, the first one to reach the finish line is the winner. Agreed? Yes. Okay, shall we? The command is ready and go. That's all, okay? Can I? Ready and go. Okay? QD not moving or moving, okay? <laughs> what? <laughs> Interesting. Oh. Shall, we, shall we help QD a bit? Okay, I think we must help QD a bit, right? Okay, good, good. Okay. They're gonna like bumper car fight. <laughs> I think this is uh, turning out to be a sumo <laughs> fight instead. Okay, M board, come on. Let's go. Let's go, bro. That way. That way. Oh no. Okay. Still very confused, alright. M is on the way. On the way, almost there. Hey, this almost, way, this almost. way. Hey. Is that counted? Still counted? Red line, right? <laughs> yeah, red line. You turn. Outside, outside. You turn, come on. Yes! 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 yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right, and the winner is not me. Okay. Mbon again. Okay. Yeah, big round of applause. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And uh, also, of course, the QD was great competition. You know, going in, bulldozing everything out there. It was really fun. Uh, it was on a rampage. Uh, but you know, I'm really impressed because I never thought that you can learn all this in a single afternoon. I really want to thank the both of you for teaching me the basics of coding and robotics. You're welcome. Okay, we hope to see you again in Make It. Yep, I'm going to come in for Make It at Libraries. From vacuum cleaners to factory automatons, robots are taking on bigger and bigger roles in our lives. If you could design a robot, what would you call it and what would you want it to do? Like this video, subscribe and answer the question in the comment section below to stand a chance to win a $30 gift voucher. I hope you've been inspired to come on down to make it at libraries to try your hand at coding. As always, thank you for watching this episode of the Library Report. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.